이탈이 보여. tax. My tax benefit is going to be the tax rate multiplied by the interest payment. Okay? So 30% of 1,500 is going to be 450, right? Multiplied by 3. So the company made a tax benefit of $450 by buying this car with a loan. Okay? Why? Because they have to pay interest of 1,500 and this interest payment was subtracted from my profit before I paid tax. Okay? So I had my profit minus $1,500. Okay? And then I equals amount profit to be taxed. Okay? Profit minus interest payment equals profit to be taxed. Okay? Do you understand? Ta in tax is done after we pay interest. Okay? So if I buy the car with a loan, I get this, I pay this interest, and then I pay less tax. Okay? 
Interest is taken away from my profit, so I pay less tax. How much less tax do I pay? $450 less tax. Does everybody understand that? Hmm? Is this confusing? Profit minus interest payment equals profit before tax? What happens to this money? Profit to be taxed. It gets taxed at 30%. Okay? Let's say our profit is $100,000. Right? Then tax is $30,000. Okay? 30%. Okay? That is net profit. Do you understand tax? Does everyone understand tax? Say them. Yes, companies pay tax. Do companies want to pay more tax or less tax? Yes. Okay, if a company has more interest payments, is it going to be paying more tax or less tax? Less. Hmm? If I have more interest payment, profit minus interest payment equals profit to be taxed. If I have a higher percentage of debt, a higher amount of interest payments, is that going to be more tax for me or less tax for me? Less tax, less tax. okay? Profit minus interest equals profit to be taxed, okay? So I have more debt, am I paying more tax or less tax? This same company, it has 90% debt, right? Or it has 10% equity. So company A, has 90% debt and 10% equity. Okay, company B has 10% equity or 90% equity and 10% debt. Okay, they both have the same uh, assets, 100,000, right? Dollars in assets and they both have the same income. Let's say their income is 30,000. Which company is paying more tax? A or B? A is paying more tax? Are you sure? Why is A paying more tax? Because 90% of it. Let's see, Han. Who says A is paying more tax? Hands up. Who says B is paying more tax? Hands up. Yes, you put up your hand. What does the heading say? What does this say? Tax benefit of debt. So which company has more benefit? The one that for tax, the one that has more debt or the one that has more equity? More debt. More debt. So which company is going to pay less tax? A. A. A is going to pay less tax. Okay, it has more debt. Which one is going to pay more tax? B. B is going to pay more tax. Why? Why is A going to pay less tax and B is going to pay more tax? Because B has more interest, they have more interest payments, right? And what can we do with the interest payment? We can subtract it from our profit before we pay tax, okay? So, Let's say this is 90% debt, it's going to be 90,000 debt, okay? And this one is going to be 10,000 debt. <coughs> so, our interest rate is 5%. How much is the interest payment for company A? 90,000 debt at 5% interest. How much is the interest payment? Multiply 5 by 9. 45, what? 4,500 interest, okay? This one has just 10% debt. How much is the interest? Multiply five by one. 500 in interest, okay? We said they both have the same income. Company A, 30,000. Company B, also 30,000, okay? Minus 
the interest payment 4,500 minus the interest payment 500. Okay? How much is this? 26, 25, 500. Okay? How much is this? 29, 500. Okay? The tax rate is 30%. So tell me, how much tax is this company paying and how much tax is this company paying? So do the calculation. Tax rate is 30%. You're paying 30% of this in tax and you're paying 30% of this in tax. So do the calculation. 3 multiplied by this and 3 multiplied by this. You get 30%. Tell me what the number is. How much tax is company A paying and how much tax is company B paying? Okay, who can tell me, how much tax is company A paying? So tax? 7,650. How much tax is company B paying? 8,850. 8,850. Okay, tax. Who is paying more tax? B. B. So who has the benefit of tax? A. Okay, so there's a tax benefit of debt. You pay less tax because the interest payment can be subtracted here. Okay, A is going to pay dividends to the owners. It has 90% equity, but it's only going to pay the dividend out of the profit after tax. Okay, can't pay the dividends before tax. So if we have a higher tax rate for a business, it's going to have more de debt, which we looked at in this question the last time. Okay? One company is paying tax, the other company is not paying tax. Which company is more likely to use debt? Let's review this question. A. Real estate corporations are paying tax. B. Real estate investment trusts not paying tax. Who is more likely to use debt? Who? A. Why? <laughs> They pay tax, right? And we get a tax advantage if we use debt. Okay, we get a tax advantage by using debt. Does everybody understand the tax advantage of debt? So we have, sometimes the company will buy the car with a loan and give it to the employee because they get some tax advantage from the debt, okay? You're going to work for the company, right? And the company thinks, I can give him a company car, okay? But I can get buy the car for him. Let's say he buys the car by himself. Can he subtract the interest payment before he pays his personal tax? No, right? You can't take away your, if your interest payments before you pay your personal tax. It doesn't work for, a person, for individuals, but it works for companies. So it might make more sense for the company to buy the car rather than you buying the car, okay? Because the company can get a tax saving on the interest payment, okay? You don't get any tax saving on the interest payment, okay? So that's one reason why companies offer the company car to the employees, okay? Company can get a tax saving by buying the company or leasing the company car. So they get some, it can be overall advantage. <coughs> Another example of this is uh, the companies can lease the airplane, that kind of thing. Okay? They can get some tax advantage on the debt. <coughs> so the second advantage of debt is it adds discipline to management. Okay? Do you understand discipline? Are you disciplined? Discipline means <laughs> you're able to do, do something. You don't give up or you do something regularly. So somebody who's disciplined, maybe they get up at 7 o'clock every morning, do some exercise, okay, study for one hour and go to school, right? That's disciplined. So <laughs> we can add the discipline to managers. If we have no debt and we have a high income and cash flow, we can become lazy, right? 
we can say anyway our income, we're getting income and we have the cash flow, so we don't need to grow, we don't need to expand, everything is okay. But if we have to borrow money, then the managers uh, now have to, they know they have to at least get the more money to pay back the interest. Okay? So we can start <coughs> to work a little bit harder and grow a little bit more. So having to pay back the interest, because we have to pay back the interest, it means that the managers might have to work a little bit harder in the company. <coughs> so let's have a look at this question. Let's assume that the debt adds the discipline to the management. So which of the following types of companies will most benefit from debt adding this discipline? Privately owned business, publicly traded companies with stocks held by millions of investors like Coca-Cola, none of whom own a large percentage of the stock, everybody owns just a small amount, okay? Or publicly traded companies with just some stockholders holding a lot of stock, okay? So which company is going to get the most benefit from the fact that debt makes the managers work harder, or forces the managers to work harder? So think about it for a minute, and discuss with your partner. ま、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で
Firms that don't have very stable earnings and cash flows have a higher probability of bankruptcy uh, than for companies which have stable earnings. Okay? So, <coughs> if we have, let's say we have company A and B again. Okay? Company A, both of them have the same amount of debt this time, 90% debt. Company B, 90% debt, right? So both are paying, we said the interest payment was 4,500, okay? So if we have one company, A, has a very stable income. It's an electricity company, okay? So company A is making a stable income of $10,000 a year, okay? Very stable. Company B, it can be volatile. Volatile is the opposite of stable. Okay? So, uh, volatile is a, is a word we can often see in finance, so we need to learn volatile, right? This is stable, always the same. Okay? Volatile, like this. Okay? So, volatile just means very changeable. Very changeable. So, in one year, it's going to be minus 10,000, right? Next year, plus 15,000, okay? But this year, it was minus 10,000, okay? So we can see that this one has a volatile earning. It still has to make the interest payment, whether it loses money or not. If it can't make the interest payment, what's going to happen? Bankrupt. Default or bankrupt, okay? So this one with the volatile earnings is going to be higher probability of bankruptcy. This one with the stable earning, it's an electricity company. I know all of you guys are going to pay your electricity bill. I'm sure about that, right? So, I can use more debt, right? I can use 90% debt at the electricity company because I'm sure I can make my interest payments. This company is volatile. It's not going to be able to use 90% debt, right? It has to use less debt. Maybe it's going to use just 30% debt or 20% debt. So the interest maybe we saw 10% debt, right? So the interest payment is just 500, okay? So we can manage here, we have one bad year, we can use the savings from last year to pay for the interest payment, okay? So just, it means that companies with more stable earnings is more likely to use debt. Do you understand that idea? Companies which have volatile profits, not as likely to use debt. debt. This is bankruptcy cost. Disadvantage of debt is that if we don't pay our interest payment, we go bankrupt. Okay? We have to pay our interest, otherwise we go bankrupt. <coughs> then the next cost of debt is agency cost. So stockholders uh, can invest in riskier projects than lenders would want them to. So, again we're talking about uh, chances of bankruptcy, okay? So, the bondholder, we said they get the fixed payment. Bond is a fixed payment. So, if we do very well, or just a little bit well, we get the fixed payment, right? We only lose money in default. only lose money in bankruptcy or default. But stockholder, it's not a fixed payment, right? It can go up or down. It's a variable. It can change. And we can lose money anytime. But on the upside, so stockholders are more likely to take riskier projects. Okay? Because if I take a risk, if I'm a stockholder, I can get higher return. Okay? More risk is more return. But do bondholders like risk? No, they want the company to take a very safe and stable investment. Even though they don't make much profit, they don't go bankrupt. Okay? Company might even make a little bit of a loss, but still doesn't go bankrupt. 
So bond holders like safe investment, because anyway they're going to get a fixed payment, 5% a year. It doesn't change. Okay? So bondholder wants the company to take a very safe and stable investment. But stockholders might like a more risky investment, because they want to earn more money. They want the company to make, if the company makes a big profit, the stockholders make more money. Okay? So they have different ideas about that. Another different idea stockholders and bondholders have, stockholders would like to pay themselves large dividends. But lenders would prefer to keep the cash in the business. Okay? So stockholders, they can pay themselves dividends. Right? They want dividends. Dividends is a share of the profits. Okay? Bondholders, they want retained earnings. Retained earning is putting the money back in the business. Okay? Put the money back in the business again, take the money out and give it to me. Okay? So they have different ideas about that. So this is called the agency cost because the bondholders basically have to trust the stockholders not to pay themselves too much dividends and not to take on too risky projects. Okay? Do you understand trust? Trust? How do you say trust in Korean? Midum? Yeah. Yes? So the bondholders have to trust the stockholders. Stockholders are the owners. If they want, they can pay themselves a lot of dividends. If they want, they can take very risky projects. Okay? So, uh, with the agency cost, we're talking about like trust cost. So the more trust problems uh, with the lenders, the less debt the firm can afford to use. Okay? If they trust them a lot, then trust is high, then the interest is low. Okay? But the bondholders don't trust the stockholders, trust is low, then nobody wants to lend them money. Okay? So the interest rate will be high. So this is the cost, right? If the bondholders don't trust the stockholder, then they're going to ask for a high interest rate and the company can't afford to use much debt. <clears throat> then the last cost, the main, most important one, is the loss of flex flexibility. So if we borrow up to our capacity, we lose the flexibility of financing, paying for future projects with debt. <clears throat> so if we are company A, and we have a 90% debt, and company B, we have 10% debt, which, country, which company is more flexible? B. Why is B more flexible? Because we have more equity. Hmm? More equity, so what can it do? If it needs money, what can it do? You can lend the money from the bank. You can borrow the money from the bank, right? Can this guy borrow more money? No, they're at the limit, okay? So they have a really good project that they want to do. Okay, a new project that they think is going to be very profitable. And they need money. But they can't get any more money, okay? These guys have a new project they want to do, and they need money. Go to the bank, yes, okay, here you go, no problem. Here's a loan, okay? So this is the main reason, the most important reason, that companies don't have really very high debt. They want the flexibility to be able to adapt. Okay? Do you understand adapt or change? So other things remaining equal, the more uncertain a firm is about the future financing requirements and projects, the less debt we will use. So if we are very sure about our future project, then okay, we can use high debt. We're sure we're not going to do any new projects. Okay? But we're uncertain. Do you understand the uncertain? Not sure. Then we we don't use much debt. Okay? We're not sure about what we're going to do in the future. So we want to have the flexibility to be able to get a loan in the future. <coughs> so
So they ask managers, what is the most important thing in deciding how much debt to use? Okay? Uh, they asked the CFO, Chief Financial Officers of US companies. They said, number one and two, equal. Maintain financial flexibility and ensure you don't go bankrupt. Okay? So we have a 90% debt. We start a restaurant with 90% debt, 90,000 loan, okay, 10,000 equity, interest payment, 4,500 a year. We start the restaurant with 10% debt, okay, interest payment is just 500 a year. Okay, we have a bad year. We have a bad year the first year. We only make an income of $3,000, okay, in our restaurant, okay. Can you see the problem? For A, for B, the only problem is we can't pay much profit to our stockholder, right? The owners don't get back much money, okay? Because it's mostly the owners. So in this case, it's the owners who are losing the money, right? But in this case, we have to pay back the bank. We don't have a choice. So we didn't make enough profit to make pay back the bank. The bank can come in and take all of our assets, like the kitchen, and the chairs, and the tables, okay, and sell them and get their money back. We're bankrupt. Do you understand? So this is ensuring long-term survival. If we have too much debt, we can't be sure we're going to survive, because we have to be sure we can make the interest payment. Okay? The second one, as we say, flexibility, right? This guy is more flexible then. We have a Another, a good year, let's say, we make a lot of profit. We make uh, $20,000 profit. So now, we're going to expand, make another restaurant, okay? So now, B can go and ask the bank for the loan, say, we made this much profit last year, we only have 10% debt. The bank will say, okay, here's your loan. Make a new restaurant, okay? This guy goes to the bank, we did very well last year. Oh, that's great, but you already have 90% debt, so I'm not giving you any more loans, okay? So this one then can expand more quickly too. So this is the main factor that the managers think about, okay? Uh, some other factors down below. Uh, debt is a predictable source of funds. Maximize the stock price because debt is cheaper than equity. Maintain financial independence. If we use debt, we can have more independence because we're not giving away ownership. In our restaurant, if we use 10% of our money and 90% of debt, it's our restaurant, right? But in this case, we have 10% of our money, 10% debt, and the other 80% we sold to our, our mother or our father, right? Who controls the restaurant now? Mother or father with the 80% equity, okay? So, we have to balance up those things. We can have our own independence if we use a lot of debt, right? <coughs> but we have to balance against the flexibility and survival points. So do you have any question about the cost advantages or costs of debt? <sighs> so we said managers value flexibility. Okay, they like being able to use capital on new investments without restrictions and they don't like having to explain it to others. Managers value control. Managers like being able to control their business. So we have to balance up these two things. How much control can we have and how much financial flexibility can we have? Okay. So what do companies use? Do they use debt? Do they use equity? The first thing that they like to use is retained earnings. That's the most popular thing. We made a profit last year. Instead of paying the profit to the owners, keep the money and reinvest in the business. That's the most popular source of money, getting money. Why? Because we don't lose any control, okay? And we don't have any problem with long-term survival by getting loans, okay? So that's the best one. The next one then is debt. After this, they prefer debt. Okay, maybe debt is cheaper than equity. Then they prefer equity. So we can see here, this is how companies fund their sales. 
So uh, we can see that uh, the pink line at the top is debt. This one here is equity, and this one is retained earnings. So mainly retained earnings. Companies like to keep their profits from last year, use those profits to invest in the company. Okay? Then after this, get a loan. And then finally, issue equity, issue stock. Right? When we sell stock, we're giving away the ownership of our company to other people. Okay? So that's in the last one. So uh, let's discuss these questions with our partner. <clears throat> what is the main advantage of making a firm public? Going from the private company to the public company, why would we do that? What are some differences? We discussed here three differences between debt and equity. Okay, what are three types of debt and equity? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of debt? So, just we can start with the first question. So, discuss with your partner. What do you think is the advantage of making a public firm, selling your company's stock to the public? What's the advantage of that? Yeah, Okay, so who can tell me what is the advantage of selling your stock to the public, selling your ownership of your company to the public? Why would you do that? Because they can sell their equity. Yeah, why? Because like now they can provide the stock. I mean, they can sell their stock. Mm -hmm. But sell your stock with Facebook. Facebook was a private company with just Mark Zuckerberg and some private in equity investors, right? Why did Facebook decide to become a public company? What advantage can they get? They can get yes? They can get more investors. More investors, right? For what? Why do they need more investors? To sell more money. For what? Uh, to expand. Okay, to expand and grow. Okay. We need more money to expand and grow. And then, maybe if Facebook didn't go public, doesn't expand and grow, maybe another social media platform could come along and Facebook could disappear after three or four years, right? So, it's a competitive environment and they need the investments, they need the money to grow and become bigger. So, second question, what, are, what is the difference between debt and equity? Oh, we looked at this one here, right? What are the differences between debt and equity? <laughs> discuss with your partner. Depends on who borrow it. It's like borrow from the bank or borrow from the private <laughs> Tell me one important difference between debt and equity. Tax, tax deductible. 
right? That is a tax advantage, okay? What else? I wrote it in financial trouble. Hmm? I it in financial if the trouble. company is default, company default, debt is, has also has priority, right? Company goes bankrupt, they sell the land, sell the buildings, give the money back to the creditors, right? Not to the owners, to the debt holders, okay? Any other difference? Okay, control is a big difference. Control, equity, okay? Equity has control, debt has no control, okay? Another difference, we're missing one important difference. Fixed payments, right? So fixed payments versus, we don't know, variable. With stocks, the price can go up or down, we can get paid dividends or we don't get paid dividends, we don't know, right? It depends on the profit of the company makes. With debt, we know we're going to get paid every year, okay? So those are the main differences. Debt and equity. So then, uh, three, what are three types of debt and three types of equity? Discuss with your partner. Ask and answer the question. Okay, so ask your partner. Tell me three types of debt, and then ask the other person. Tell me three types of equity. Okay, uh, Kim Sun Young, where is Kim Sun Young? Can you tell me three types of debt? <coughs> the company is going to get use debt. How do they use debt? What are the types of debt? Bank what? Bank loan? Okay, one. What's another one? Lease? What's another one? Bonds. Okay, somebody asked me the last time to, they had a question about what bonds are, right? We'll see bonds very often during the course, so I explained just the first few weeks, a lot of new words, it's more challenging in the first few weeks, right? But probably we'll see bonds 100 times or 150 times during the course, okay? So we can't explain every single word in detail at the start, we have to start somewhere, right? But anyway, bond is... <coughs> The company lends money directly from investors, not from the bank, okay? It's like a loan directly from investors, instead of going to the bank. Done using the help of an investment bank helps you. The investment bank helps to match the company and the investor using an auction, auction system. Only big companies can issue bonds, okay? Then what are uh, two types of equity? Uh, Kim U Yahan Kyan. What are three types of equity? <coughs> Capital is money we use for the company for investments. Cash is Hyungum. Three different types of equity.
People who own part of the business. What different type of ways do they have of owning part of the business? How can they own part of a business? What's that called? You don't know? Okay, can anybody tell me? Owners, equity. So the owner invests their own money. Okay. Private equity, they get their somebody else to invest and get some ownership. Right, the next one. Common stock, we sell to the public, okay? Right, and the last question, what are two advantages and disadvantages of debt? So we talked about the advantages and disadvantages of debt. So ask your partner about what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of using debt. Okay, Kim Yumi. Where's Kim Yumi? What are the advantages? Two advantages. Tax advantage. And another advantage. Discipline. Okay. And then uh, some costs to main cost of debt. Uh, Kim Cho Yan. Yes, what are costs of debt? If we have debt, we are more likely to be bankrupt. Okay? Bankrupt chances is more possible. Okay? Another cost of debt? Agency, debt. We have to trust the stockholders. Okay? 